Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I have to connect us to the um, – we haven't connected this session to the – I did. It's connected. The phone? To the, to the oh. teleconference? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to um, our special webinar for you. It's fun to see all your names appearing here in Blackboard Collaborate on the screen as, as uh, many of you are just starting to join us. Um, so the next uh, next couple hours is, um, is dedicated to hearing what you guys uh, and gals have been up to since your expeditions and uh, going out into the field. Um, we invited the researchers, but it was kind of last minute. Somebody just joined by phone. We'll find out here in just a moment. Um, so I'm not sure how many researchers are actually going to join us, um, hopefully, um, but many of the, the teachers from 2010 and 11 and 2011 and 12 groups will be joining us. And then we also invited, just so you know, some of the new newbies, the 2012-13 group to join if they had time. So we'll just see who, who all joins us. and. Um, and we'll play that piece by ear. Anyway, um, so we'll get to doing introductions here in a moment. Um, for many of you, this um, this platform we're using is new to you. This is Blackboard Collaborate. They bought out Horizon Wimba. And so there's some features of Horizon Wimba but, um, that are still exist. However, there's lots of new stuff. So you can see that we have some video going on. So if you have a video camera, you're welcome to turn it on. It's not necessary, but uh, you know, it's fun to see your faces. Um, there's a chat area that people have been saying hi and chatting in. And there's a list of participants. And uh, the important thing with the list of participants is actually there's a little um, hand icon near the top there, um, just above the list of names. Um, if you click on that, that kind of raises your hand and lets us know you want to do something. Yeah, Sarah's got a point to it. Um, and then um, one thing we're going to try out today is we're going to be sending people to breakout rooms. So um, we'll go into more details of what that looks like, but it will be just a blank white space that you'll be sent to with some other people, and then we'll bring you back to the main room. So if you suddenly disappear to a, a room, um, you'll know what's going on. Um, there's a little emotion cons you can use. Um, of course, this is supposed to be open dialogue, so if you have something you want to say, just click on your hand icon and we'll just let you uh, talk. Um, if you're using voice over IP, you need to click on the talk button once. Don't have to hold it down. You just click it once and the talk button will, your mic will be open. And then it's very important that you click on it again and close the mic as soon as you're done talking. Um, that way we, um, somebody else can talk, otherwise you'll get a lot of feedback. So click it once to open the mic, click it once to close the mic. And like all of our events um, we do, we archive them. And so this one's being recorded and archived, so we'll send that out when we're done. Um, did I get everything, Sarah? Yes. All right, so a few, another thing that uh, before we get into who's online and where everybody's coming from, um, again, there's, this is just a reminder about how to interact in this, this forum about typing in questions or clicking on the hand icon and then we can call you. And if you are getting feedback right now, it's, it's because you might be joining by a phone and, by, and watching through the computer. If you're joining by phone, you'll want to mute the sound on your computer so you don't get the feedback. All right, so um, let's see. It looks like we've got lots of people joining. Lots of names. Good. Okay, so we're going to go around the room here, our virtual room, and reintroduce ourselves and um, say where you went. And I put in a, a um, one thing that you need to do, which is to give us your elevator speech. Give us one sentence describing your science project, see if you remember that. And um, and then give us an idea of where you're teaching this coming year and the grade level or subjects. Just something to kind of get everybody reacquainted, um, especially since we also got two years worth of teachers here and maybe some um, um, people that don't, didn't meet you in person up here in Fairbanks. And um, 
I should actually I should just say that uh, you know all me, but many of you haven't uh, met Sarah before. So maybe we should start with uh, uh, Sarah introducing herself and then um, and where she's coming from since she wasn't around for the two orientations to meet you all in person. And then we'll go around the room. Sure. Yeah, so um, this is Sarah, and I have talked to almost all of you via email or on the phone, and I have met some of you, and I'm really lucky to have already. So I'm the the new Kristen Tim. I know we miss her, but she's uh, she's off doing great things. So I am coming to Polar Trek. I've been here probably the last ten months or so, and um, working with Janet and getting another program a lot better, and really looking to. Looking forward to the future, the next couple of years, and, and what that brings. And so I was a, a, a teacher for, I think, eight or so years and been living in Alaska, uh, teaching science down in Denali National Park, and now I'm in Fairbanks. All right. And Chris, or uh, Sarah, I only said that because I wrote her name down. Um, I can't get acuconference either, too. I'll come okay, thank um, Okay, Alex, we're going to start with you, Alex. Oh, that's right, Alex. You, does that, Alex, can you call in? It would be helpful for you to call in at least and have a um, audio this time, so we can hear your voice. So we'll see what Alex says to that, and then um, we'll go to uh, Bill. Well, oh, hi, folks. I'm Bill Schmoker. I'm here in Longmont, Colorado. Um, I was on the 2010 International Continental Shelf Survey, um, so my one sentence elevator speech. It was a five week cruise on the US Coast Guard cutter Healy into the Arctic Ocean to collect all kinds of geophysical data on a voyage of discovery. Um, next year I'll be back for my 20th year at uh, Centennial Middle School in Boulder, Colorado. I'll be teaching Earth Science. I think that's it. All right, thank you, Bill. Okay, and I'll go back to that slide, Fiona. So next up, we have uh, Claude. Go ahead, Claude. Hi, uh, this is Claude Larson, and I went out in uh, 2010 to Kamchatka, Russia, to look at prehistoric uh, human artifacts that were buried in layers and layers and layers of volcanic soil. Um, and we were looking at how climate change at that time affected how humans adapted. And right now I'm teaching eighth grade at Jefferson Township Middle School in New Jersey. All right, excellent. I'm going to have Sarah say something Bill real quick so the video goes so off Bill and to her. So go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, that's not working. Yeah, that's not working. But now I got it. All right. Um, yeah, it's great to hear Claude's voice as well. It's great to hear everybody so far. Uh, Jim, go ahead. Jim Millie, that is. Jim, we hear some noises. I didn't talk. Jim, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. Beeping going on, but Jim, your mic is still open. There. All right. Well, Jim, we'll uh, we'll catch up with you here in a moment um, and see what your audio issues are. In the meantime, maybe you can type in at the bottom where you are, and we'll figure oh. you out. How about uh, how about uh, John? John Wood. Hello, uh, I'm here. <coughs> uh, I'm from uh, 2011 and 2012 expedition with uh, uh, Dr. Sue Natale. She's at the University of Florida. Uh, I've been working up outside of Healy, Alaska with her team who are studying the carbon balance in warming and drying tundra. So we've been measuring uh, the effects of climate change on the tundra out around Healy, Alaska, which is near Denali National Park. 
and then I, I was lucky enough to come back this season and follow up some work at a different time of the year. Uh, a little bit of the winter, a little bit of the spring, a little bit of the summer I've gotten in at this point and, and gotten to see how that shift and change goes on there. It's been very exciting. Um, I teach uh, middle school at uh, Fountain Valley, uh, California at Talbert Middle School. I teach 6th and 7th grade earth science. Uh, that's it. All right. Thank you. Um, Jeff, we got Juan. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Juan Botella, and I was in Antarctica in 2011. I was aboard uh, Palmer, um, the ship, and I was doing uh, research with people from all over the United States in physical oceanography, and we were sampling the water um, all the way to the bottom, all along the Pacific coast of Antarctica, trying to measure how um, how the properties have been changing. It's a repeat a cruise from 10 years, uh, from 20 years before, and try to see uh, how's the ocean responding to climate change. Um, so that's it. All right, excellent. Okay, and we got uh, Katie. Um, I'm Katie. I went to South Pole in 2010, and I was there working on a project called Ice Cube, which is an in-ice neutrino telescope that uses 5,000 photo collectors to study the light emitted from muons caused by neutrinos moving in the ice. And um, I teach physics in Arlington, Virginia. And I'm sorry, you weren't in my picture because I forgot that you'd come the year before. So. Um, okay, Kevin McMahon. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin McMahon. Um, in the summer of 2011, I was on the middle of the Greenland ice sheet at Summit Camp, and I was looking at the impact of aerosols on Arctic climate. And basically, we were looking at anything that was floating in the air. It may have been volcanic ash or soot from burning fossil fuels. And I teach uh, sixth grade earth science at Renfro Middle School in Decatur, Georgia, right outside Atlanta. And Wednesday is my first day back at school, and we kids uh, come back August 1st, so my summer is quickly coming to an end. Wow. That is crazy. Crazy talk. Everybody's uh, being very sympathetic with you, Kevin. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, Jim is introducing himself there, so make sure you catch that. Um, and while you're reading that, we're going to hear from uh, Leslie. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Uraski, and I was down in Antarctica 2010-2011, um, and our project was Glacial History in Antarctica. I was with a group from the University of Washington, and we were collecting rock samples that will be dated cosmogenically, which is a kind of radiometric dating based on cosmic rays changing elements in the rocks. And we were along the very historic Beardmore Glacier um, for five weeks. And uh, what we're trying to do is look at the rate of retreat of the Beardmore Glacier since the last ice age. And I will be teaching at Rollins High School in Wyoming this next year, um, 9 through 12, pretty much every subject we have. All right, great. Um, Lisa Seth. Are you there, Lisa? All right. Sorry, Jen. I saw Leslie's name. Um, I'm Lisa Seth, and I'm the newbie on the block listening to all of you guys, and I've watched so many of your journals, um, and your projects have been amazing. So, um, so I'm just here to listen for about a half hour before I have to run to a meeting. But I'll be going to Barrow in about three and a half weeks with Dr. Karen Ashton out of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. And we'll be studying the feeding grounds of the bowhead whales on a smaller research vessel, about a 50-foot boat, going out for 12 to 20 hours sampling um, at a time. And I teach at Spring School in East Hampton, New York, out on Long Island. And I teach a general middle school earth science, a general biology this year, and, an, uh, and a high school level earth science as well. All right, great. 
great. Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Um, we have Michael Lampert. Hi, everybody. I hope you can hear it. I have a bad mic, so let me know by uh, little happy faces. Um, my name is Mike Lampert. I'm at West Salem High School. I was in the class of 2010. I headed out to the uh, Swartisen uh, Glacier and on the Arctic Circle in Norway. They actually lived underneath the glacier, and we had a hot water melting gun, and we melted holes in the glacier and stuck uh, accelerometers and friction plates uh, looking at the motion of the glacier. Uh, at that time of the year, the, there's a lot of melt water, so the glacier is starting to move quite a bit. And uh, next year, I'll be, oh, I'm sorry, the, the professor I was working with is Neil Iverson out of uh, Iowa State. And next year, I'll be teaching physics and ninth grade science and microelectronics and, oh my gosh, everything else, and honors research, which is a really cool class that kids get to do real research projects. All right, great, thank you. Good to hear your voice. Um, Mike League. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike League. Uh, I teach at Millsboro Middle School in Millsboro, Delaware. Uh, I deployed in the fall of 2011 with Dr. Adam Marsh. We were looking at the adaptations of marine worms that live in the sediment uh, underneath the ice in McMurdo Sound. So we did some uh, diving to collect them and then looked at their genetics, comparing them to uh, worms that are very similar and live in tempered waters. Uh, and this year will be a little change for me at Millsboro Middle. Uh, I'll be moving to an instructional coach position, so be working with 6th, 7th, and 8th grade teachers. All right, great. Okay, and we have Nell on the phone. Yep, hi everybody. I'm Nell Herman. Um, I was a pump station in Antarctica in 2012 on the Western Antarctic Peninsula. And I was working with Chuck Ambler from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And he's a marine biologist. And the project I was working on um, involved the effects of ocean acidification on four different species of seafloor organisms. Um, so he and the other divers would collect specimens. And then we'd take them back to the lab where we did some experiments to see how changing the pH and temperature affected um, the four species we were looking at. And I am a high school teacher in State College, Pennsylvania. I teach ninth and 10th grade enrichment and gifted support. All right, thanks. And we have Paula. Hi, I'm Paula Dell. And um, I was, I deployed last summer, spring, at Palmer Station, also where I worked with Dr. Kristen O'Brien, who's located up in Fairbanks at the University of Alaska. And we were studying um, the effects of thermal tolerance on white-blooded fish, the ice fish, which have no hemoglobin. I teach in Chicago at Lindblom Math and Science Academy, and I teach general biology and AP biology. Great. And um, Alex, did you make it on the phone? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yay. Oh, it's so nice to hear everybody's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Alex Eilers. I went to Antarctica in January and February of this year, and we were studying wood elk seals and their um, overwintering habits, uh, where they went uh, during the winter time. And I was studying with Dr. Jennifer Burns primarily. Uh, Dr. Daniel Costa was also down there, and uh, Dr. Eileen Hoffman. And I work at the Pink Palace Museum as the manager of education. And I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. All right, great. And uh, so I think the only person we actually didn't hear from because of audio difficulties was Jim Miller. So, Jim, I don't know if you want to try one more time or if you want to dial into the 800 number. And Katie, I want to try out your video. Hold on, Jim's trying Hold to try. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, 
right. I'm not sure what's up with your audio, Jim. We did hear you for just a moment, and then we were walking on top of you, and then we didn't hear you at all in that last part. So I'm not right. sure what's happening. Now, uh, Sarah, what were you saying? Um, is there anybody else on the phone there? Yeah, uh, this is Jim yeah. Pottinger from uh, Pennsylvania. Oh. Jim Pottinger, hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, I was on the uh, 2010 uh, and 2011 expedition to Greenland, and uh, our science project, um, we looked at solar radiation on the Greenland ice sheets. Um, the second time we went up uh, was basically a uh, maintenance uh, session for all the automated weather stations in the Greenland Climate Network. Um, I currently teach at a, a school just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I work with uh, gifted students in grades 9 through 12. All right, good. Anybody else that we missed that was on the phone that's not online? And while we're doing that, Katie, do you want to just try your video real quick, see if that works for you? Now you've been working on it. All right, she's typing, so maybe not. Okay. So I just wanted to relay to everybody that um, Jim Pottinger is not online, so he, um, you got a lot of congrats to the new degree. Good to hear your voice, Jim, and things. <laughs> so I will relay those kinds of things as I see them. Uh, okay. So One second. Katie, can you talk? press the talk button or no? It's still working. All right, sorry about that. All right, not sure what's up with the video. As you can see, some things haven't changed compared to Wimba. Some things remain the same. There's always crazy stuff going on. So, um, Jim, I will try my best to realize that you are not visually seeing this, but I did send out a PDF um, also of most of the slides. So did you end up getting that? Yes. OK, so I'm on the agenda one. And um, real quickly, the, I just wanted to go over, this is what we're going to try to cover here um, in the rest of our time, is uh, what is this experience, what does it look like for all of you as teachers, and again, um, I, if there were some researchers, we would ask them about their reflection, but nobody's on, um, a lot of them are in the field, as you know, <laughs> so um, it's that time of year. Um, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about staying connected and finding out what your needs are as alumni. And then um, anything else that we um, want to announce, we'll cover at the end. So um, the purpose of doing this, um, this webinar, and we do apologize to the 2010-11 crew, time just like slipped away. And before we knew it, it was like, hey, we never did a webinar three for them. Um, usually we try to do this soon after everybody's come back from the field, so it's kind of fresh in your mind as to what what happened. And um, but at the same time, I guess doing it a year year and a half later or so is going to be kind of interesting because for your group, we'll be able to uh, see what you've been doing with your experience since you've had over a year since you went out into the field. So we want to reflect on, on the past and look towards the future. We want you to share your experiences and kind of recap the experience with one another. Um, communicate what you're doing um, you know, uh, with your research team, if anything, other teachers that you work with, um, and of course your students and the public. And then um, we hope that this, this um, webinar will give you a chance to gather ideas and new ideas on um, how you might take this experience into the classroom and beyond, or um, you know, just uh, develop some new friendships and relationships that weren't there before. And then we also um, want to figure out how you guys can contribute to the Polar Trek alumni and what, what your needs are. So that's kind of the idea behind this webinar. Um, I had some slides. Before we go into reflection, I wanted to share with you that we've been reporting about Polar Trek um, to our funding entities and things like that. And this was um, a few of the slides that are coming up. Right now we're on the Polar Trek timeline. And, um, kind of show where where we are and what's been happening over time. Um, to 
give you guys a sense of where we are. We are in 2012-2013 teachers. So Lisa, who introduced herself um, just a little bit ago, is part of the third group of teachers that went out during the Polar Trek 2010 to 2014 grant cycle. So the people on the phone are from the first year of this grant and the second year on this grant, and then Lisa represents the third year. We have one more year um, within this grant cycle um, for applications, and um, we'll be announcing those and opening that up here um, in August. August 1st is hopefully the launch date for that. And then it kind of shows you the legacy of Polar Trek in that timeline. So just kind of give you an idea of where you are in this our little Polar Trek Trek world um, to show that uh, um, that how many people have been participating and what our goals were. We have the slide of Polar Trek participants, and you can see um, that we were awarded um, for 48 teachers, and we've placed over 94 so. Far far without even having our fourth year of funding. And uh, you can see where um, how many have gone to the Arctic and gone to the Antarctic. So we're well above our goal of 48 um, already, of which all of you are, are part of this graph. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and then um, out of all of the grant years, um, you can see where the breakdown and demographics of where you all come from, whether you're from high school or middle school. And sorry, I see that some writing um, got on top of the Einstein Fellowship there. But anyway, um, you can kind of see the breakdown of our participants and where you all come from, mostly middle school, which is probably not a surprise to most of you. So those are just some um, things about Polar Trek and data that we've been gathering since you all began. Um, and then. Um, to show that you have been busy despite everything and whatever else is happening in your lives. Um, this is kind of the outreach highlights that we've gathered um, that you guys have all contributed to um, over, actually this is over since the IPY grant started in 2007, so it's more than just the current grant cycle. But anyway, we've got lots of lessons on our, our uh, resources page. We've built up five uh, new collections, and actually we're about to add a new collect, an, a collection of resources. So if you haven't been to the Learning Resources database in a while, there's a lot of new material there that you should check out. Um, and um, we've uh, started an international working group on how to measure these um, programs, as well as um, we'll talk about connecting later on, and I'm sure Sarah will mention Polar Education. Educators International. A um, bunch of you, we, we got to meet face to face and see your happy faces again recently at the Montreal conference that was in, um, in April. I think that was April. Yeah, it was April. And uh, he, a number of alumni presented there, so that was pretty exciting. And then we've had a lot of participants join um, through the Polar Connect events, and I know many of you have brought your classrooms in over the years to join in those events. So you have been busy. So we want to hear more about some of those details and and uh, and what you've been doing um, with your experience. So um, I'm going to let Sarah at, um, was responding to so the questions just so Jim and others on the phone that can't see know they've been asking about ballpark numbers for the journal pages, and Ronnie does keep track of the numbers. So if you need some um, specifics about a Polar Connect event that you did, or how many people have read your journals, or posted questions, you are welcome to ask us about that. Um, we can get that information from Ronnie. So um, I said that was coming up. And again, we can bring that back up on, on your needs at the very end here. So the big thing that we want to do is reflect um, about your experiences. And um, Sarah and I want to use uh, the breakout rooms for some of this um, activity that we're going to be talking about here right now. But we'll, I'll, I'll go into specifics about the breakout rooms and how they work. But the three things that we want to hear from you today about in particular are your experience, um, you know, things that surprise you or that you didn't expect. So some of you is going to take you back away down memory lane. Um, how then we really want to hear about how it influenced your teaching and provide us an example of how you're using it in your classroom. 
And then uh, something that you've been doing with your uh, class outside of your classroom or with your community, um, something that you've either done or that you plan on doing so that we can get some ideas um, generated. So does anyone have any questions about um, what we're going to cover in the next uh, hour or so? Okay. So um, I think for this first one, um, things that uh, surprised you or that you didn't expect, um, we can uh, send you guys to the breakout rooms and let's see how many people we got. Um, Jim, uh, since you're the one on the phone, and actually, you know, yeah, 15 people maybe, 15. Yeah, Jim, you may have to stay with Sarah and me for a little bit here, and and you can tell us what you think. Or uh, well, I'm not sure how this will work by phone, so just hold on for your instructions. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe five per room, Sarah? Sure. Okay. So what's going to happen when we send you to a breakout room is um, you're going to, I don't want you to panic. It's going to be completely white space in there. Um, you'll need one person in your room to be a recorder and to take notes um, uh, or to, we'll give, um, um, we'll give everybody whiteboard um, Actually, we'll do that right now. You guys are all going to, if you're online, you should all get like a little bar that uh, has, um, shows up. Pen. Huh? A little pencil? Yeah, it has a little pencil. It has a little hand maybe pointing an arrow and some boxes and maybe a little camera and stuff. Um, so anyway, um, you one of you will need to uh, be the writer and take notes and write on the white space and we'll let you play in there. And then we can take pictures of that white space and, and bring you all back into a main room. So um, don't panic. Sarah and I are going to be around. But your job will be to, uh, going back a slide, which Sarah, I lost my Explorer button. Thank you. Um, is uh, to discuss the experience and um, one thing that surprised you or, and or one thing you didn't expect. So with that, Sarah, I will send the first five into a room. I wanted you to start with uh, below John Wood and send into, I'll start at least um, sending to a the breakout room with Alex. Sure. You can divide everybody into groups of Five evenly. Um, I'm just going down until I get to John. So then you send John and five more down to another a new breakout room. Okay, you got it. And then I'll take uh, Leslie on down to another one. Or I'll t I'll start with Lisa and go to a different one. It keeps jumping because you're doing it, so I'm I'm going slow here. <laughs> and who are you starting with? Just said Leslie and Mike to uh, room two, I believe, and I've got everybody okay. else going to room three. Okay. Let's jump. Yeah. Okay, Mike Lee. So room one has Alex, Bill, Claude, and Jim. Room two has John, Juan, Katie, Kevin, and Leslie. Room three has Lisa, Mike, Nell, and Paula. Okay, and maybe you could go to room one, and I'll go to room two real quickly. And uh, because I, um, I don't know how it's going to work for talking. We have to go to that room. I think. Well, I can't mute my phone. So it's well, just put it, hold it somewhere else, or uh, that's okay. It will be just Jim and me that hear the. Maybe um, maybe this will mute it. Hold on. Oh shoot. So, um, well, she's in another room there. Um, Jim, are you still there? Yeah. Can now or anybody else hear me? Yep, I hear you. Yep. yep. How about uh, Bill Schmoker? 
Okay. So now, uh, you guys, I don't know how this is going to work for you because did, we didn't figure out the phone thing. You and Alex, everybody that's on the phone, mm -hmm. you are joined to me, and so you can't talk to your room, I realized. Oh, okay. So uh, who do I have on the phone? Do I have Alex? Paula. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Who else do I have on the phone? No, wait, hold on. Uh-oh. Where are you? I'm here. No, I'm still here. Okay, and I've got Tim. And Alex? Yes, I'm here. And Paula? So, yes. If you mute your phone and then unmute your computer, you will be able to hear if people are talking. All right, but but they so so what about Mel and Alex, everybody that's on the phone now? That's, so those people other than Jim, you are still connected, correct? To the uh, yeah, they're in their private rooms. I see them in yeah. the room. But they so they might not be able to talk, but they'll be able to be in the room and listen. Because right now I have my computer muted, so I can't hear anyone other on the computer because they're all in different rooms. So if I mute my phone and then unmute my computer. Other than Jim Pottinger, I can go listen to what's happening on the computer. Okay, so I don't know, Nell and Alex and Paula, uh, do you want to try that? Sure. I will try it. It, it just text us if you, if you something's going on, because I can read text. I'm going to go uh, double check that, Janet, and just kind of see what's happening out there if they're talking. Okay, I'm going to just stay here. Cause I think Dana, I'm on my cell phone. What do you press to mute a cell phone? Star six. Or just hold it way, way away from the computer. <laughs> My um, when I mute my phone and I listen to my computer, I can hear you guys, but you guys can't hear me. I don't know why they can't hear me when I turn it on. Like I have speaker on, you know, let me shut speaker off while I listen to you. Um, but how do I get the mic to work on my computer? I know that sounds like stupid, right? But um, well, you have to once once your mic is um, uh, once you mute your phone here, um, then you have to press the talk button. To say anything. And Where, now, where's the talk button? It's up above. Um, do you see a little um, a black space that says audio, video? Do you see the word audio and video in a pull down yes. menu? Okay. okay yeah, so I, don't I know. can talk to speak and then click it again when I'm done, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. 
but you will get feedback if you don't mute your phone. Janet, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. So I just want to see if I still have Jim Pottinger on. Yes, I'm here. Okay. So um, hold on, Jim. We'll get you. We'll have you just pipe in your thoughts while you're thinking there. Sorry, I can't send you to another room. <laughs> and you get to hear all the chaos on our end here. Okay. Okay. So what, what's going on on your end, Sarah? I'm, uh, I'm using the computer. No, that's all right. Janet, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I hear yeah. you. Everybody's chatting away, so that's where I went to go see what was happening. Um, okay. I'm not, it's not clear to me how we can get Jim Pottinger somewhere. Well, we can't because of the, um, because he's just on by audio. So, Jim, what we can do, though, is when everybody comes back into the room, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll end up taking pictures of their breakout rooms, mm -hmm. and we'll just have you add your piece into it, okay, so that we okay. get that recorded. So, in the meantime, so, Sarah, let's give them about, um, since it took a little bit technology-wise to figure that out, um, you know, just, a couple, you know, like three, three or four more minutes or so, or do you think that's enough for five minutes total? Um, yeah, they're all in the middle of chatting, and I'm not sure how far, so I can go scoot back through the rooms and see where they're at. Yeah, because I think when you go scoot, when you go to the private rooms, can you you can type in there in their chat areas, right? I don't think so. I'm just listening and using my microphone. Okay, I was going to just, okay, that's fine. But Katie Sherry's having trouble with typing in a box. Yeah, I don't know. She might be having some other issues, so maybe somebody else can be taking notes. Who are you listening to? We are hearing Claude because she couldn't mute her phone, so it's uh, feeding like back through her computer. So we hear yeah, group yeah. one. <laughs> right, I'm muting you and going to the computer. Okay. <laughs> I can kind of hear what's going on. So, Jim, how you been doing? Uh, great. Keeping busy. Yeah. Uh, wrapping up my, uh, my doctoral program and trying to keep the kids uh, from tearing each other's heads off, and, you know, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. You must be uh, – The big trip be... out west. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, how did your trip go? Uh, well, I'll be leaving um, this Saturday. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm heading out, and then we're going to, you know, uh, go into Boulder, and I have a, 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 you know, time to meet with Nico, who is on the research team, uh, to go over, you know, the data processing – of the AWS uh, data, uh -huh. um, and uh, you know, post a couple of journals on that, and that'll kind of bring everything uh, to full circle. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that will be a fun trip. So I'm I'm glad that we were able to figure that all out. Does that work out okay with uh, what Raya came up with with the gas and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, it worked okay. out great. Okay, good. Yeah, we just needed something to compare it to, and so it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. good. Yeah, so that'll be fun to see Connie and, and see how he's doing. Well, did you hear? Um, Connie's actually no longer at CU. Oh, no, I didn't hear that at all. Yeah, he, um, he actually uh, took a position back in Zurich, Switzerland. Oh. He, he's in charge of like a, a group larger than what he was in charge of at CU. Oh. And Nico's still at, at CU, and he's still, uh, you know, doing the AWS Greenland uh -huh. stuff. That's why, you know, I'm... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I should get... Con you do have Connie's new email? N uh, not yet. No, okay. that's, uh, I'll be getting all that when I meet with Nico and contact okay. him and everything. And uh, Connie's son, Simone, is still in Boulder also. Okay. I'll get all that. When I when I'm in Boulder from those guys. Okay, yeah. When, when you do get hear from him and get his contact stuff, let me know because uh, I think I still have all of his old things, and that's yeah. probably why I haven't heard anything. Right. Oh, I hadn't heard that at all. Well, that's good. I'm glad he's been able to move on and do something. Yeah, uh, yeah. He went through a pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Pretty hard. Um, well, good. Yeah, that would be fun that you could, are able to connect with everybody. So. Hey, Sarah, I'm back. Um, I could tell that at least group three had gotten through question one. Okay. And Totally. One group was sort of typing a little bit, and the other group was still sharing. So I couldn't tell exactly where they were and who was sharing. So maybe at least five more minutes. Okay. Is there is when you were in those rooms? There's no way to send them a message to the breakout rooms. There must be some That's way to send it. Yeah. Yeah. There must I mean, be some way that we can send a global message to everybody. Well, you can pull everyone back, return everyone to main room. But you I don't know, but I was thinking a yeah, chat message, like you have five more minutes, you know, type of thing. Yeah, so what I can do is write on their board, you have five minutes, without interrupting them. Yeah, yeah, I just was wondering if there was some global way to... Uh, <laughs> there probably is. I know, I'll look, I'm looking while you're, uh, if you don't mind okay. going in and going to each one, I'll look and see if there's something. I'll do that. Thanks. It's okay, then we decide we would play with this. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had all of you guys. Because <laughs> there's so many cool features, but we've never done some of them. It's like, oh, let's try that with that group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Let's... <laughs> so anyway, it's like, well, let's try this breakout room stuff. Maybe this will work, maybe it won't. So we already figured out one drawback is if you visually can't see what's going on, you cannot go to a breakout room. I can't park you there by the phone. Only by computer. Yeah. Oh well. Well, that'll be fun. So, how long is your uh, trip then? Well, um, I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. Uh, total time gone from my house in Pennsylvania will be about three weeks. Wow. Yeah, cool. we're going to spend. Um, we're going to swing by Wyoming and visit uh, a relative up there, and then down into Colorado and, you know, uh, swing by Boulder and uh, then back to Pennsylvania. It's going to be about a 4,000-mile round trip. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, three, you know, three kids uh, in a not-so-big SUV. It, it'll be interesting. <laughs> you like yeah. the Griswold vacation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no, that was fun to follow. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I know we've uh, um, we do long trips like that up here in Alaska, but we did that after uh, uh, IPY Norway and stuff. We did a, at least a couple of weeks traveling around with the kids in a little rental car and camping. It was yeah. it was interesting. Too, but yeah. I think Tim Martin's on a big expedition right now with his kids. He just oh, yeah. and uh, is driving across. He's he's somewhere in the mid in the west right now. He's gone for about three weeks, too. Wow. Yeah. I know. We've always wanted to drive from here, from Fairbanks to down there to the lower 48 and do that. That's why we originally got a camper. But yeah. we've, been wait, we've been working the kids, the miles in on the kids. <laughs> got to break them in, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's a long haul. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is, we're ready. I think, I think we're uh, you know, getting the car ready and uh, getting our, our iPods all loaded up. And, yeah. <laughs> You know. uh, so it'll yeah. be fun. I'll, I'm just hoping that the uh, the fires are all extinguished by the time we get out that way. Yeah, my mom lives in southern Colorado. I guess it's gotten a little bit better. You know, it's not quite as bad as it was. So. Yeah, that's so. good. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, those bark beetles are just crazy. Janet. Yes. Were you asking them to just do question number one? Sorry. Yes. Okay. I think we can. I think. Uh, then, I got, uh, group three is done, and group group two is ready for number two, and group one is still typing. But I think we can pull them all back anyways. Okay. Let me copy what they got to our main room here. I'm gonna I'm gonna type in the chat, and maybe everybody can read that. Okay. All right. I pulled in all of their stuff here, so we should have. Okay. Some. Yeah, I, I just, well, Mike Queeg says, I think we're good for what group one. Thanks, Mike. We'll pull everyone in. 
Okay. Um, I don't know that. Did you just type something in? I typed into the chat. I didn't see anything. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just yank them all. I'm going to go group one. I guess that's who I. I will. You know what? So group one, so one that you said isn't. Ready? There's t they're currently typing. I'm watching them. Okay, I can pull in room two. So I've just pulled them in. Okay. And I'm going to pull in room three. All right. So if you were in rooms two and three, you should be able to hear me now. So give me a thumbs up or a smiley face if you can hear me if you were in a room. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Happy face from now. Okay. Smiley face from Juan. Okay, good. So we're waiting for one other group to wrap up room one. And um, sorry if I pulled you. Sarah's in that room right now just talking with him. And hopefully, let's see. So somebody from group two, does this look like uh, your slide? Another smiley face, anything to let me know from group two? Click your notes. Hey, Janet. Um, Bill said that sounds good. People are typing furiously, but no worries. Bring them in. Okay. I'll take another uh, copy of their menu or their thing, and then I'll bring them in. Typing, typing furiously. It's kind of funny to watch. I know. They just got drawn in, though. So we should have everybody in the room now. And I did take a picture, one more last picture from group one there in your room, <laughs> I'm hoping. Um, so this should be your latest slide from group one. That looks familiar. <laughs> oh, bummer. I see that there's some scrolling. Oh, yeah. On this one. I wonder how you make that bigger. Uh, it would it would be in the font when they chose to write. Oh, oh somebody's cool. still typing away. All right, who is still typing in group one? Is that Claude still type? Who's doing that? That's kind of like magic. Me, Bill. Wonder how when it will stop. <laughs> no, I mean I wonder. <laughs> I wonder. I got to the power. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. So um, we're going to, uh, how about we go to group two since, oh, Bill, you won't be able to type, though, while I'm, when I change the slide here on you. So let, tell me when you're done typing. Are you done? Yeah, I'll call it good for now. Thanks. All right. So somehow we need to get out of that little text box so that we can see what you typed there. And I don't know that I can do that because I think you were. No. It's got little scrolls on there. I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing. Um, okay, so um, we'll just let you explain. So um, we're we want to see what you guys had to say about um, something that was. Um, uh, surprise you or something that was unexpected. So for uh, group one, does somebody want to recap what you wrote here? And you don't have to read it verbatim, but some of the highlights. Um, I, I can recap. We only managed to hear uh, Claude and Claude, excuse me, and, and maybe me. I'm not sure, but Claude had uh, a, you know a great trip, but she was surprised by how hard it was to get back home. She got kind of stuck in Kamchatka and trying to get out of Russia. Um, I mentioned that I was surprised just by how the experience keeps going. I didn't really know that two years later and really for the foreseeable future, I think I'm, I'm benefiting from this. People are talking about it. I'm giving talks and I'm, I'm in touch with my team. And of course, uh, being in touch like this with Polar Trek, I didn't know that it would keep going. So very pleasantly surprised by that. Um, otherwise, just reading what some folks said, uh, surprised just by the amount of training, activities, um, the, the strong connections, the 
the amazing experience of before, during, and after. Um, well, let's see. I'm not quite sure if I'm. I know I'm missing. Oh, uh, surprised about during the expedition, just the energy uh, that that she still had with the despite the lack of sleep, uh, the amount of time it took, the the 24 hours of daylight uh, was a surprise. I may be missing someone in group one in room one, so chime in. Okay, yeah. Anybody in room one that wants to add um, any anything? All right. Apparently, you got that covered. Okay, um, we will go to group group two. If I can find your slide here. Okay, I think this is group two slide. So, a spokesperson for groups two about uh, the experience and how it surprised you or something you didn't expect. Anything you want to add to your cute little notes there? Nice. I'm kind of. Katie's talking. I just talk a lot. I'm sorry. Group two, please type in or chime in. I just I will just talk. It's just me. Um, so we talked about some of the surprises being um, in at you know at the station or at the place where you are located, and other surprises back home. Um, so Kevin, who's been back to Summit Camp several times, talked about how different it is, uh, for how well they're doing, trying to accommodate their needs and be respectful of the environment. And, um, and also out at the poll, I was really surprised by the community there and uh, how that community continued off ice. And Leslie mentioned how she made connections with other Antarctic people both on the ice and off the ice. And, um, Juan and John were talking about classroom affects both in the physical classroom and outside of it, how the, the students' questions improved and became more serious and more probing, and also how opportunities for Juan around Madison have been so interesting for him to get to know people and to get to share his story. All right. Anybody from group two want to add anything that Kitty didn't cover? We'll go to group three. So, um, spokesperson for group three. Okay, well, uh, I'll step up and kind of summarize. Um, so, our surprises fell kind of into the sort of physical aspects of our expeditions, like um, surprises in light and seasonal changes, uh, working in a glacier, that kind of experience. Um, we were surprised at uh, how hard every one works from top to bottom, every aspect of every team. Um, sort of hard work, dedication uh, was a theme that ran throughout everyone's experience. Um, I was surprised by the outpouring um, from classrooms. When I came back, I had a lot of like thank you packages and photos of classrooms. Um, and also um, surprised at how much other people at McMurdo Station were interested in doing outreach with us. Um, you know, some of the best ideas came from people who worked in the um, sort of the cafe and uh, in the ship store, and you know, those types of folks were very interested in reaching out. Um, Paula was surprised at how open all the research was, how much um, people were willing to share, especially when you tell them that you're a teacher, um, and the communities that have built up around Palmer. Um, and then uh, Nell was surprised by how much um, interest has continued since her expedition is uh, concluded, but how often she's invited to speak and how much, much um, you know, everyone uh, is interested in that. And finally, we just uh, were awed at how much we learned from everyone's expeditions. All right. Great. Um, that was fun to see what you guys are all coming up with. Um, Let's see, um, we had Jim Pottinger who wasn't able to join any of the groups because he's only on the phone. So uh, Jim, what would you like to add to all of this? What were your surprises? Well, sorry for being the lame-o who couldn't make it on the computer. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, well, 
experiences that surprised me or I didn't expect. Uh, I had some family issues with uh, my research team that had uh, had us uh, make some alternate plans uh, on the fly. So um, that was the first expedition. The second expedition, um, we had a volcanic eruption, and that set us back about a week. So we had to compress. Uh, about three weeks of intense manual labor into about seven days. Um, so uh, I learned that uh, you know when you're renting an airplane, um, you only have so many hours to work, and uh, you really had to uh, reach down deep, dig deep to to get the work done so that uh, you could make the science happen. Okay, and um, Leslie said we are not to forget to ask you, Jim, what surprised him while at Summit. Oh, maybe that's what she means. I didn't know if there was something else Leslie was thinking about some other story. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. Nothing. I think, did I get that, Leslie? Bill just, says, lame not. Yeah. <laughs> Mike says, you get, no, she just wanted to hear from Okay, thank you, Leslie. Leslie was making sure we were being inclusive. So that was it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's hard to read sometimes all the chats and stuff while you're doing all this. All right. Um, very, very good to hear all of your experiences. So um, the next piece is, uh, again, it's a sharing piece. Uh, Sarah would like you to actually draw this <laughs> with markers and everything. We're having fun watching what you guys do with the whiteboard. And uh, thank you for being patient. Oh, there we go. Somebody's getting crazy now. Um, give you guys some markers and some space, and look at what you'll do to our discussion board. Um, we want to find out how this has in, uh, influenced your teaching and um, give an example of how you're using it in the classroom. And we're going to do breakout groups again because there's so many of us, it's hard to go round robin and hear everything. But to help Jim out, we're going to keep a batch of you in the main room here. We'll give you some white space, and then that way Jim can um, um, participate through the audio piece and hear what's going on. And um, was there anybody that went to a breakout room that it didn't work for? You can um, either give me a thumbs. Oh, actually, we could do a, uh, a poll. Uh, a poll, real quick. There's a little check box by the yes and no um, up near where the smiley face and stuff like that is. Yeah. So give us a check if it worked for you. Give us an X if it didn't work for you, and that way we'll all know how to handle this next activity. Everybody see that? Looks like we're getting some checks. No. It might work better this time if we try drawing because then you can um out some of your ideas you're not working just with text. And drawing just for fun, a little artistic representation and somebody can can explain your silly drawing when you come back. Um, and talk through it while you're in there. All right, so we haven't heard from uh, a couple of people. So uh, Bill and Alex, um, Alex, or what, what didn't work for you? So I know. Uh, this is Bill. I just I only really heard from Claude and myself. I'm not sure if other people tried or what. Um, so didn't hear from everybody in one. Okay. Okay, that sounds uh, reasonable, Alex. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. On the phone, I could hear you guys, but I um, couldn't hear. So if I would have, you know, muted, you guys would have heard me. They wouldn't have heard me on my session. Do you know, All right. So I. So on the computer, I heard my team. Um, on the phone, I heard you guys. Right. So I'm thinking this time around, because you couldn't talk, at least you can draw on the board. Right. Is that correct? We were typing. Yeah. yeah, we were typing. Okay. A <laughs> Pictionary for polar yeah. tricks. <laughs> you could each, you could divide it up. Each person can have a little spot to draw, or um, somebody can. Jim can talk, and somebody can draw for Jim. Yeah. What will what will happen is probably group one. Maybe since most of you were by phone anyway, uh, or there was like half of you were by phone because I had Claude as well. Um, maybe will, but I think Claude had to sign off and go to another meeting, so she's not on anymore. Um, We'll just keep you on this main one, so you'll do both. How about we do that? And so you won't go to a breakout room. All right. Um, and then the rest of them will send to a breakout room. Does that make sense, Sarah? Yep. 
Okay. So the next piece we're going to send you again. Um, we'll have breakout room for uh, um, two and um, three. We'll send you guys, and then the group that was in number one, including Jim Pottinger, you'll just stay in this room, so you aren't going to go anywhere. But we'll give you some clean space here in a moment. So the purpose of this is again ex discuss how this experience influenced your teaching, and be sure to really uh, share or draw or write or an example of how you're using this in your classroom. And we'll do this for about uh, ten minutes, and then we'll come back and and um, and we'll recap and see what everybody has got. So we'll check in on you in ten minutes. So um, who was in group one? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Starting from uh, one down, we'll go to groups. Okay. Okay. I'll do that. All right. I created. And then, if you're here in the room with me, we're going to give you a new page. So Alex and Bill and Jim and John and Jim Pottinger is on the phone. This is your space if you hear me. Okay. And I'll try to be quiet. And am I leaving Mike Lampert in this group? Uh, you can send it to another room. Okay. Room two. All right, can you guys hear me? Yep. All right, I think um, I will start on this one. Um, you know, since I don't teach in a traditional classroom, the the biggest connection we had was really doing stuff beforehand, during, and afterwards. And we have found that the connection we've made to all sorts of teachers. Um, was absolutely amazing, and we have restructured everything we are doing so we can actually connect to teachers on um, more of a regular basis. And so we're we've now we're now doing newsletters and e-blasts and all sorts of stuff to kind of continue that communication. Okay, anybody else from your group here? Jim Pottinger, since you're on the phone, um, I will tell you that um, I'm going to assume this is Bill that's drawing a ship. <laughs> All right. So we're discussing uh, question two. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's influenced my teaching uh, by allowing me to have a, a, a broader view of what goes into making uh, the science happen. In the Arctic and Antarctic regions, um, and that with the kids, the kids that I work with, you know, they're um, very high achieving students, and uh, you know, they set very high goals. And doing this type of uh, experience allows me to kind of uh, show them multiple paths to doing this kind of work, and, and show them uh, that you know, science can be uh, very fun and interesting, and uh, um, there are a lot of very important things going on right now in our world that they weren't aware of. Um, and, and how do you apply what you're learning in the classroom to real life and, and to real science? Um, so with me, it's, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, with the students. Um, you know, I take examples from multiple Polar Trek teachers uh, from different locations and, and maybe have that student look at what that uh, uh, science, that teacher and researcher are doing together, and and uh, you know just make sure they understand uh, you know what it takes to, to get to that point. Look at some of the journals and uh, and just learn about that that uh, particular uh, project. Okay, I'm trying to capture what you're saying, um, and. In the meantime, um, Bill, why don't you, uh, so Jim can visualize what you're doing online here. Can you explain what you're drawing right now? Um, one of the things, we kind of jumped ahead and talked about this a little bit, but um, I think one of the big things for me is bringing oceanography back to a landlocked, mile-high 
place, which is Colorado, um, as a teacher, I, I had only academic uh, background in oceanography. I, I had never even slept on a boat. Um, so to, to live on a ship and be in the ocean environment uh, continuously for five weeks was huge. And, and so as a teacher, I think that makes me a lot stronger uh, when I teach oceanography. But it's great to bring that back to kids. Um, a lot of my students have been many times to oceans and been on cruises, but I actually have a lot who haven't. And so my drawing is just showing the Healy in the ocean and uh, an arrow back to the state of Colorado kids, teachers, and our community. All right. And then who drew the little uh, person with the, I don't know what that is. Oh, the graph. Nice guess. Okay, that was me, John Wood. <laughs> okay, an artist I'm not. <clears throat> um, I was just trying to show, and I think it's been mentioned. Oh, go ahead. Okay, uh, I think it's been mentioned before. You know, um, not only is it amazing for the kids to to really be connected with scientists that are out in the field working so hard and doing just crazy stuff, what seems to be just crazy stuff out in the middle of nowhere. But to bring that data back into the classroom, real numbers from real experiments, and to have the kids go over that data and work with it and look at it and come up with their own conclusions and suggestions, and then to be able to go back to the researchers and have a discussion with the actual researcher or with one of the uh, research assistants, grad students, whoever it's going to be, uh, all the way down to those people visiting. It, it really makes those connections for the kids. And the kids, I think, really begin to understand that science is alive. Science is something that's going on, and science is a way of approaching just about any problem you can really come up with. So that's my little scientist visiting and talking about their data. <laughs> right. Awesome. Um, okay. And um, somebody, oh, Jim, you want to say what you're, do you want to give the rest of the group, uh, especially Jim Pottinger, because he can't see what you're writing. Tell him a little bit about what you're, um, oh, you don't have audio. Is that right? So you're typing. Ah. Okay, so I will read to you, Jim Pottinger, what Jim Miller just wrote since he doesn't have audio. <laughs> it's like, okay, all different types of technology. So he says, unfortunately, I was not assigned a science classroom like last year right after my expedition, so I was not really able to implement any activities in the classroom. While I could not teach about the polar regions in my classroom, I did, however, go to many of the other science classrooms to share my experiences. However, I found out that I would be teaching biology again this year. Yoo-hoo! Um, I added the yoo um, hopefully and thankfully. And the other biology teachers and I are meeting the second week in August to create a new calendar curriculum. Oh, that's cool. Um, for biology, and we're going to do different lessons on the polar regions. So it's Jim Miller. And um, Alex, you want to explain your cute little diagram there? Sure. Can you hear me or am I muted? I hear you. OK. Um, we did, you know, a lot of stuff before, during, and after. So the museum is in the center, and we found a lot of new connections um, to some of the schools that we um, haven't been as directly involved with. And the project just got, you know, a number of schools um, excited about it and following along, and we're actually advertising um, the new cohorts. Um, um, adventures right now, so hopefully they'll get some, which really turned into a lot of outreach uh, for the museum. And we just um, are hoping to continue that throughout this year and, and those to come. All right. So um, it looks like you guys did this pretty good. Now what i got to figure out here, since you're on the main page, is how I take a picture of it. So I'm going to take a picture with it one way. That I get this. In case it gets lost somewhere. Um, my bar and bar. Okay. Do 
hopefully when I take a picture of it this way, it will... Sorry, I'm talking to myself. We haven't, um... Let's see. Well, I got a picture at least one way, so we'll see how that goes. All right. So anything else anybody wants to add um, before I go check on how uh, the other rooms are doing? Hey, Janet, can you hear me? Yes. So I can hear you guys just kind of in the corner, and I just muted everybody else. Um, people are doing quite well. Group one looks like a bunch of third graders drawing, and group two is like a very organized paragraph. It's pretty cute, but they're doing good. Okay, yeah, and then we have a, um, so while you're here, so this uh, this group is done. They just all, um, we have some mixed drawings and texts, and, and uh, we just kind of went around to see what everybody had to say. Um, I took a regular screenshot of it, but when you're in the main room, how do you take a picture of the blackboard, the whiteboard, I mean? I believe you can probably just leave it right where it is. And everybody will come back, and that whiteboard will be there. Oh, that's true. But if you take a screenshot, that's a good idea, just to make sure. Yeah, I did, just in case. OK, did you take photos of the other rooms? I can let you go do that, because you seem pretty good at it. Um, I could do that, if, if you think everybody's pretty much done drawing. Um, just about, let me. I think just about. Let me check on this group. I'll tell them a few more minutes, OK? okay. Like two more minutes. So, uh, John, have you recuperated from your travels? And John was just up here in Fairbanks recently again. He was continuing his expedition. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm just beginning to get back into the routine now. It's a little bit more than I was expecting. <laughs> well, that was so funny to run into you guys at, uh, at Honeydews on uh on Friday, but I'm glad we did. My kids were bouncing off the walls after that. It took me forever to get everybody to sleep. There's a lot of sugar in that stuff. So. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. What a small world. And yeah, you, you definitely had your hands full. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, then we ended up uh, Saturday. We drove to the park and we, um, we went and went. We tried to go hiking up there when you can drive in 13 miles there. You can stop before you, you know, where you don't need a permit and stuff and go hiking up on the rocks. So I was trying to get everybody to go hiking on the rocks, but there was no parking. We couldn't even park. There was no place. So hey, we had, yeah. Have you taken pictures of everybody or grabbed them? Nope. Nope. Not yet. Okay. I'll do that right now. Group number two is going to explode off the page here. Or group number one. Somebody. Okay. I, I can help. You got it? I got them. Okay. Yes, I got their pictures. Okay, and do you want me to bring everybody back? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay, returning everybody to the main room. Okay. So, um... <laughs> You're coming all out of your rooms. You're back. Katie, you are back. You're having a hard time using this. I don't know. It might be uh, you seem to be having uh, more technical issues than some other things, um, other people. But um, so it might be just your connection today or something. We're, I don't know. Yeah, we're also pushing it a little bit here. So we'll maybe this will be kind of the end of our playing around. But yeah, we'll just yeah. some things out. Thanks. Yeah, you guys have been patient. Uh, this is all about we're giving a little technology uh, refresher here while you are at it. So. So um, you should all be seeing uh, Group 1's um, uh, depiction and words about um, what they were uh, bringing back into the classroom. And so I I don't know, we actually, I didn't designate a spokesperson, but if there's somebody from Group 1 that would like to explain what is um, some of the highlights, or um, that would be good. So anybody from Group 1 that wants to talk about their drawings or what they wrote? 
Wake up, group one. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk. Um, I think we pretty much had a central theme. Um, it's base, It was basically, um, you know, science is alive and, and uh, active right now and interesting and, and all the um, students from, you know, all around the world could um, could see, you know, that everything was happening and at the time it was happening. Um, and then all of a sudden, or you know, all of us also um, kind of said, you know, just getting the word out. And even though not all of us were uh, teaching right after the expeditions, um, we're still planning to do something based on our expeditions, um, you know, in in the future. Okay. All right. Does that is that does that um, accurately? <laughs> Reflect uh, what you're thinking there. Other members of Group One. So we had Bill and John and uh, Jim Miller and Jim Pottinger. Sounds great. Okay. All right. Oh, Bill's typing. Um, so while he's typing, we're going to move on to uh, Group Two, I believe. This is your. This is Group Two's. Whichever group it is, can whichever group it is, um, go ahead and explain what you have here. There's lots of stuff, and I see lots of text and little boxes and all sorts of cool things. So, somebody want to take a crack at this? As you can see, we didn't agree on what we we're going to do in that board. So, there's a lot of things, and from my part, I think uh, the way has changed my teaching is that uh, I can talk more from experience now than from just what I read in the textbooks. And that allows me to bring things that the textbooks don't have, like what do you do when the, there's a weather storms and you cannot go out and sample for the million dollar, or millions of dollars research project that you have, and how do you, uh, you got to be flexible and adapt to that. Things that I don't see in the textbook that are extremely important for them to understand how, how science happens. Um, also better at conveying to my students how creative they need to be not only for finding um, the solutions to the answers, but for coming up for, with questions. It was very interesting to see all sorts of scientists every day trying to think, oh, look at this, maybe we can do this and do that, and adapt every day the plan to what, what was feasible and the, the questions they want, uh, wanted to answer. So besides the very uh, elaborate lesson plans that I came up with that might take a couple of weeks on a climate and weather course of what we did, the everyday talking about how science happens, how it's not so black and white as the book shows, I think that's the, the most important thing that has changed my, my teaching. And uh, yeah, thank you for whoever uh, uh, imported that photo of your students. That's awesome. And I like the ships that are going. So far we have two ship drawings. Um, Okay, any other thoughts from uh, this group? Anything that you wanted uh, that Juan didn't cover? Okay, we're going to move on to the next group. Um, some very cute little stick drawings here and another boat. Um, so somebody from this group uh, like to describe what's on it. Remember, Jim Pottinger can't see your fancy drawings, so we need to also do it verbally. Uh, this is Mike Lampert. I, you know, we were typing so much, I don't think that we had any conversation at all, so it might be easier if we just go quickly about what we each wrote here. So I just want to, uh, okay. for me, what I was doing, um, uh, I have an honors research class, and so for me, when I was out there um, doing, uh, helping out with research out there on the glacier, I, I wanted to bring that experience back to the classroom. I couldn't really bring the glacier back, but um, the idea of the, the equipment that we're using, the accelerometers and so forth, I, I had the kids uh, use those devices and uh, had them do uh, research projects. And then uh, we had a few kids uh, uh, enter the science competitions here locally, and we had one kid go all the way to ISEF, not with the glacier stuff, but with another project. But the whole idea about doing research I think leading by example is really important, and I, I really feel that this experience gave that to me and helped out the kids in that way. And what's and one other cool thing for me was um, I got a call from Disney, and they asked me to help write 
uh, their latest Bill Nye video, which is, is going to be on renewable energies. And they needed one of those amazing facts. And so uh, I put in the fact that in Norway they get a lot of their hydroelectric power through the melting glaciers. It lasted through about three cuts on that draft. I don't know if the final uh, video has it in it or not. But anyway, that was a little fun part of it for me. Yeah, that's exciting. That's great. Um, okay, um, so since uh, Mike Lampert said to, to do it this way, uh, Mike Lee, do you want to describe your points there? Sure, so real quick, I think um, one of the neatest parts for me was uh, how much my students were seeing connections in every topic that we studied to work that's going on currently at the polls, uh, either in our weather, energy, ecology, planetary science. Um, it was really, really awesome to see students make those connections on their own. Um, two, it was really cool to connect them to uh, researchers, especially I found the younger graduate students could really make some powerful connections, um, whether it be because they're closer in age or students could more easily see themselves in those roles, uh, had a lot of interest in um, becoming researchers or working in the field of science, which is really uh, unique uh, and very cool for students of this area. Um, and finally, in the classroom, we're utilizing the photos and video that uh, we captured at the bottom of McMurray Sound. And students are actually analyzing it right along with the researchers doing counts and things like that, which is really kind of cool. Um, always, it, um, it's really neat too to kind of feel that increase in confidence and the immediate hook to engage students. It's sort of nice being a celebrity for a little bit um, and having students immediately buy into uh, what you're trying to do. And I, that was all, all part of the experience and really, really uh, excellent for me. All right. And uh, now, we can't hear you now if you're talking into your phone that might be muted. Star six to unmute. I know I heard you earlier. <laughs> No. Uh, no. But she's got neat stuff. She was talking about her um, getting funding for her polar center, um, kind of taking off of her polar ambassadors high school club. So that was a big, that's been a big thing for her. That's one of the, the biggest things she was typing about. Okay. And All right. They're writing a proposal for um, discovery moments, which will involve developing curriculum about ocean acidification. Yeah, lots of great things you guys have done. Um, it was good to see. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for sharing there. The next one, we promise we won't send you into the breakout room since I think it's getting to be a little bit of a challenge. So um, we'll just do a, a round robin on this one. Uh, one activity or something you've been doing outside your classroom and with your community, a little bit like what um, Mike Lampert said about, you know, he's been contacted about by Disney. So something like that. So we'll just go around the room. And uh, also you can add anything else at that same time. But we'll start with uh, Alex. All right. Um, well, we've been busy. Actually, um, I thought I had my last Polo Trek follow-up presentation on Friday. And we just found out we had another one today. So um, like you know, all of you had made mention to, this is this just keeps going and going. So I, I think this interest is, is um, you know, exceeding my expectations. Um, so also, one of the other things we're really hoping to do is we call these legacy events. Um, and we've done, you know, a year worth of polo trek. But we, in the IMAX, we've gotten a to the Arctic IMAX. And so we're now going to be connecting um, connecting the poles. And so we're um, oh, cool. doing a program um, called Journey to the Poles. And we're in the middle of doing that right now. So that is a kind of a legacy program that has um, come out um, of this. And, and there's one other thing in the works, but I don't want to say anything because I'm afraid it'll jinx it. <laughs> but if it happens, I'm sure you'll know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay. How about uh, Bill Schmucker? 
All right. Um, I guess the next thing I have coming up that I'm excited about is crossing a state line. I'm going up to Cheyenne, Wyoming in October to talk to the Cheyenne Audubon Society. So I've, I've had some fun giving talks to bird and nature groups and, uh, you know, beyond my, my teaching circles. It's pretty rewarding to speak to a group like that. And so, sorry, Leslie, I'm encroaching on your territory a little bit, but uh, that's my next official event coming up. Yeah, well, you should go visit her. Yeah, she's typing in there. Where is it? And she wants to come see it. So, sounds like a good connection. All right, uh, Jim Miller um, is typing. Okay. So, uh, for uh, Jim Pottinger, Jim Miller says he has two speaking engagements next Wednesday. He's speaking at the Akron Science Cafe and Rotary Club and speaking to a senior center. So, it sounds like he's been doing some additional public speaking after after the fact as well. Good. Um, uh, John Wood. Okay, well the most recent and exciting thing that's happened to me is I was uh, listed as a guest instructor, nicely by Sarah and, and you, uh, on a uh, class that was given in Denali National Park. I, it was put on by the uh, Murray Science Center and it was for instructors or teachers in the area. Most of them were from Alaska although one teacher came up from uh, Maryland. And we spent four days in Denali uh, going around with Dr. Harry Chapin. I'm sorry, Terry Chapin. <laughs> I always want to say that. Anyway, Terry Chapin, <laughs> uh, who is a legend in his own time. He's uh, been around a long time up in the Alaskan area doing uh, ecology and climate change and just a whole bunch of stuff and what a wealth of information. So I got to sort of tag along on that, be a guest instructor, give some lessons and some of my input to some teachers uh, in the area and I think it went over fantastically well and uh, we've got some teachers who are very excited about getting involved with Polar Trek and getting these lessons back into their classrooms and uh, incorporating it there. Okay. Sorry, I took a little bite there. Um, yeah, that was uh, from all accounts, it sounded like a great, great, great activity. So glad that worked out so well. Um, Juan. Besides the, the regular uh, going out, like uh, I hear everybody's doing, uh, going to libraries and museums and, and giving talks. One of the things that I've been excited is uh, to um, the students that I've in my classrooms are actually starting to do that instead of me or with me. So I've had a student give a couple of presentations um, in, in a museum and a library, and I think that's very exciting when the, when the students get engaged. And the thing I'm still working on is uh, some of the pictures that I took on my expedition. I had. Um, some students in the art department to create paintings based on those pictures and we're submitting them to, to be put on the art center in Madison. So uh, we, we still need to do some work. The first round we didn't make it, but they told us we can uh, work a little bit more and get more students engaged in painting uh, some Arctic uh, scenery, uh, Antarctic scenery, and then we, we'll be able to maybe display some pictures and paintings by students, which I'm very excited about. Lots of people saying that that's neat. Um, okay, um, we have Katie next. Um, I've been still involved with a summer camp through Ice Cube, and I just got back from that, so that was pretty cool. We had 50 kids this year learning about Ice Cube and translating it into Lego Mindstorm robot programming and trying to create 3D arrays with LEDs and um, figure out if we could get a neutrino event shown in those LEDs. So that was a great kind of hands-on. And while we were there, we actually collaborated with NSF to get uh, satellite time for some of the winter overs at the pole. So the kids had a live video conference with the 11 of the winter overs at the pole on Wednesday morning last week. So that was really cool. They got a chance to ask their own questions and um, participate with South Pole scientists. Okay, 
Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a great idea. And uh, Katie, have they been doing that camp uh, every year, and it's just growing, or is this kind of new for Ice Cube? Yeah, they've been doing it um, specifically on Ice Cube topic for about seven years, and I've been going for four years, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. This year, we also had Liz Ratliff there, who's going to be a 2012 Ice Cube teacher participant through Polar Track, and I think a lot of you guys met her in Alaska. So she was there this time to get those students from Minnesota encouraged to pay attention to her trip, uh, even though she's from North Carolina. Wow, that's a great idea. Great. Um, okay, next up is uh, Kevin. Okay, um, my next plan is really when school starts, when we learn about climate change, um, our students actually put together an interactive night where we invite parents and the community in to see what the kids have learned about climate change. And sort of like what Juan, Juan was suggesting, um, you know, it's nice to kind of get the students involved in doing this stuff. And so we just have different stations set up where Parents can calculate their carbon footprint. It's an activity that we do in the classroom so the kids know how to do that and know how to help. They have iMovies and uh, slideshows and things that they've learned um, about climate change that they share. And then we kind of have a culminating activity where either we'll have a, a guest speaker come in to, to talk or one year we even had a a contest, are you smarter than a uh, sixth grader related to climate change questions? And so we had one very brave parent volunteer who um, who went up against some of our um, students with that. So it's a way to get the community involved and learn a little more about climate change. Great idea. Love to see the, the parents do that. How fun. Um, okay, uh, Leslie. Okay, well, I have been very busy doing lots of presentations, both to service organizations and schools. Um, last spring, I had a really exciting opportunity. I was able to publish an article about Polar Trek and my experience in the National Association of Geosciences Science Teachers Journal in the Trenches. And then this next fall, I am going to be presenting two different sessions at the Wyoming State Science Conference, one of them on Polar Trek and how to get involved in my experience with it, and then a second one um, that was inspired by the Polar Conference in Montreal this last spring. And it's basically just going to be a polar science um, with a bunch of neat ideas and labs that teachers across Wyoming can take back to their kids. All right, cool. Yeah, your article is really good too. Um, let's see, uh, Michael Lampert. Hi. Um, when I was uh, over there uh, in Norway uh, last year, I had an elementary teach, uh, teacher follow me quite extensively, and the classroom is uh, just right across the street from us, and so that class has uh, continued to work with me, and her kids have done a lot of research, and uh, this year they came over and uh, did PowerPoint presentations for my students, and my students put a science show on for them, and that was a lot of fun. And um, this next month I'll be uh, working with another teacher, actually a French teacher who's running a science camp, and I'll be presenting all about polar track there and trying to get kids involved with research. And then uh, coming up uh, in the school year, um, I'm crossing my fingers here. Uh, I have a grant in to the uh, organization that puts the experiments up on the space station. And so I'm going to be running a contest with uh, all 300 students, uh, ninth grade students here at West High. And I hope uh, to present all the research that I have done, all the different trips, uh, including Polar Trek, and, and talk to all the kids uh, about the research experience, and hopefully get them to be real researchers and get an experiment aboard the space station. Great. I was hoping that that comes through for you. That sounds like a really good idea. Um, okay, and um, Michael Lee. 
So uh, this summer I've done a couple of professional development workshops working with teachers kind of in their off season and trying to help promote and spread the word. So I had one last week and one this week. Um, it's also a good time to hit up the local library circuit. So we've got a couple of those in uh, Nature Center. Um, when we go back to school, uh, we have a, obviously open house and that kind of stuff, but we do uh, student-led conferences. And it's a cool evening uh, to like bring in gear. So uh, this fall we'll have uh, an opportunity for students and parents to kind of look at some of the stuff that we did, uh, touch the dive gear, look at uh, the photos and videos that we shot and kind of um, work with some of those materials. And then uh, finally in October, uh, University of Delaware hosts something called Coast Day. Uh, and they get quite a number of visitors, about 10,000, um, down to the little local marine uh, school campus, which is right down the road. Um, and so we'll be doing some presentations and stuff with that um, and the general public. So those are kind of the three things or four things on the horizon. Well, that sounds like you'll be busy here when school starts, <laughs> for sure. Um, okay, let's see. It looks like Nell was typing in her, so I'll get to that in just a sec. Oh, well, actually, let me see. So I'll back up for Nell's since it's uh So, um, Nell, do you want to try talking Hello? right now? Yep, I heard you. Oh, good. Okay, so I can actually talk. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, something that I'm doing right now is um, during the summer I live in Maine. And I work at a nonprofit organization called the Marine Environmental Research Institute. And I've been able to incorporate a lot of the stuff I learned about ocean acidification and why that's especially a problem in the Earth's polar regions um, with some high school kids during a what's called a junior intern program, um, where high school kids actually come from different parts of the United States to stay here for two weeks. And I've been doing a little ocean acidification workshop that's been really fun. Um, where we actually sort of replicated on a much smaller scale the experiment that my PI was doing at Palmer Station. So we have aquariums set up and have been um, bubbling carbon dioxide into um, seawater and looking at how it affects the mass and the behavior of two different common marine animals here. One is a little snail and one is a soft shell clam. So that's been really cool. Um, and I, I also work as a naturalist on a boat in the summer um, and have been able to talk a lot and even include a little component on the boat to learn about ocean acidification with some kind of simple just hands-on activities, um, you know, blowing into uh, water that has brum thymol blue in it to show how uh, adding carbon dioxide makes water more acidic. Um, and then just doing some little demonstrations with tons and vinegar to talk about the issue. Um, so those have been some things I've been working on right now this summer. I'll have another group of junior interns here in a couple weeks. Um, and then back at the high school, I plan to keep going with the Polar Ambassador Club I have. That's actually gained some popularity, which is fun. I've got some incoming ninth graders who are going to join up, and um, we're going to hopefully do a little climate change summit at the high school um, this fall or winter where we'll bring in some different researchers and talk about climate change issues, and it should be good. Okay, cool. All right, so um, Jim Pottinger. Jim? Do we still have you, Jim? Oh, I guess not. I must have lost him. I never heard him beep. Um, so I had uh, just one more that, uh, blah, blah, blah. now where did it go? I have, um, oh, there it is. I have some feedback from Susie Ellison. She wasn't able to join, but she wanted to share something, and I totally spaced this out. Uh, but she said that she's been sharing her experiences in her community and with the local archeolo archaeological society. So she went out to Raven's Bluff. Um, as well as uh, northern Alaska. And at a naturalist night, she's been um, doing things there at the local environmental center, the library, as well as doing some radio interviews about polar science, climate change, and environmental, environmental literacy. And she's giving more public pre presentations at her library this fall. So we just wanted to share that with you. Um, and I think, did we get everybody? Got everybody. Okay. Um, let's see. 
So um, thanks, thanks for uh, taking the time to um, do those three questions. And um, as you guys were uh, sharing, there was a bunch of different uh, text going on, and I think I think Juan and Alex and some other people have all connected. But one thing that um, I wanted to let you know that we are doing is um, Polar Trek is making a movie. <laughs> We're going to use it as a way to um, show the different products and to share some of the stories that uh, both the teachers and researchers have been doing. It's kind of a final dissemination project, and. Um, we will we will talk to some of you individually about different um, pieces of this, but I think um, you might have seen an email recently that went out about legacy products and things to share. Please um, respond to that. I know it's kind of it might be uh, um, something you already shared today, but if you respond to that email, then we'll have it captured in one place, and we'll share it with uh, Zeb and Joette and Ronnie, who are all helping make our Polar Trek movie. And we're trying to just get all these stories and products in one place, and then um, we'll put together different. Um, we'll put together one movie, and then from that one movie, we'll use it in a number of different ways. And um, it's just a good way to capture what you've all been doing in a very visual way. So if you have photos or videos that are particularly good of students, or of you doing something, or your researcher that you just want us to have, just send it, send it to us, and then um, we can. Put, share that with the other people working on our movie. So that's one thing that we're doing. Um, the last piece here that I wanted to cover before we all disconnect and go away again and everybody's lives get busy, busy is to talk about connecting and how to stay connected. Um, Sarah sent out a survey, an alumni survey, um, a while ago. And I don't know, Sarah, if you wanted to talk about the results of that or where you are with that, um, but you're welcome to do so. Sure. No, there's a there's a ton, um, and people are really interested in actually in a lot of different things. But the what was really nice to see is that you all are um, dedicated in some way to keeping things together and um, and keeping in contact with one another. So Janet and I have been trying to figure out you know what is the best way that we go about that. And of course, we have our little uh, Facebook page at the moment, and it's nice to see everybody on there and chatting and sharing ideas and articles that they've just read. And so that's what we're doing at the moment. But in the next year or so, Janet and I are going to figure out, with all of your input, what, what the best way is to keep you all connected. Um, people were really interested in organizations that had co-planning, kind of working together on lessons. So I thought, I thought that was really neat. And um, maybe a, a, a monthly update. Uh, and we do have our Polar Sphere newsletter, and Janet has it mentioned here, so I'll let her go into that. But um, yeah, in developing relationships with other organizations like the Association of Poly Early Career Scientists and that kind of thing. So I'll I'll leave it at that for now. Okay. Yeah. I just uh, when I made this slide, I was just randomly throwing up some things I knew were out there. Um, is, there is there anyone that has not seen the Polar Sphere newsletter? So using that little poll polling yes no device um, above our names everybody check whether yes you've seen it or no you haven't because I think that there might be some of you who haven't seen it maybe not great so the only ones that might be Katie Katie have you not seen it did you disappear it would be a little technical trouble too on her part yeah oh. <laughs> Okay, so it might be um, your email address, because it, it goes to the email address that we have for you um, online through uh, Polar Trek, and many of you have changed that to a personal email address, so that might reflect that your profile online has not changed and has a, uh, a current email. It might be your old Polar Trek. Um, yeah, or it could be a spam filter, but I can look on yours. In particular, Katie, and see what's up. Um, so anyway, the Polar Newsletter. Um, Gary Wishy um, is a person who is handling that, and you know he's trying to put together um, just like um, at your request, just something that gives you a little feedback about uh, what everybody's doing, both from the perspective of the researcher as well as from the teacher, and then we try to announce little upcoming 
things that are going on. Um, and the other place that we publish often is on Facebook. So Sarah just put the Facebook page. It actually just recently changed. We had a fake Polar Trek was a person. We got rid of Polar Trek as a person and created a group page. So if you haven't transitioned over from the person page to the group page, um, that link should get you to the right spot now. And um, we we also do tweet, but not very often. So sorry about that if you like tweets. Um, this is something Sarah and I are not very good at. <laughs> hey, volunteer to help. Um, yes. <laughs> and I want to say too that uh, you are welcome to contact your research teams and invite them to that Facebook page. Again, it's just our kind of informal way of staying together. And um, and if they do decide to be a part of the Polar Trek uh, group or ask to, it'd be great if they can send a little message and let us know who they are. If if they're a grad student that we don't recognize their name, we want to make sure it's all Polar Trek people and researchers and whatnot. But um, that might just be helpful for us, so we know who's coming. Yeah, that, and the reason why that, that we did that. So we have there's two pages that you'll see our names who connected with, and some of you are crossovers between that two. There's the Polar Educators International, which is not Polar Trek. It has many of you are, are members of that, but it's an association that got created from as a, a spinoff from the Montreal meeting. It's kind of like Apex, where it's a formal, a more formal group for people that are interested in educating others about the polar regions. And that's broader. It's more than Polar Trek. It's a much bigger group. So they have a Facebook presence as well. Um, and Sarah is happens to also be on the steering committee for there. So you might see some overlap there. And then we have um, a Polar Trek um, Facebook page, and that's for alumni, both researchers and teachers. And we're trying to there's we try to keep things a little bit separated. Um, between the two. And so you actually have to be a uh, request to become a member of the Polar Trek group. So just like she said, we want to encourage the research community to join that. So if you know somebody, just let them know. And like Sarah said, have them send them a message through Facebook's fine too. They can do it that way too, not just by email. Let us know who they are. So that's kind of our social networking tools. Expedition pages, some of you still um, use them. Um, Jim Pottinger, who was on the phone earlier, he's actually making a big trip across North America here this uh, next weekend with his family and go see research people in Boulder. And he's going to use his expedition page to update his travels and talk about what he's been doing. Others, um, like John Wood, has come to Alaska a couple of times. He's been posting. So feel free to use those expedition pages. Or, and um, if you're having trouble logging in and all that kind of good stuff, just give us a heads up about that. Um, but um, you should realize that there's a teacher's manual online there when you log in. And we put a lot of information in there as well. And um, so if you forgot anything, that's where it lives. If you have travel requests, so you want to still go visit a researcher, that's fine. Even if you're from 2010, um, 2011 group, feel free to contact us about any ideas you have about staying connected with your research community or attending a conference together and presenting or any of those things. Um, just uh, let us know. Um, and then I put other, because I couldn't remember if there were some other things. We do have ECW kits, remember, that you can check out. You can be an alumni and check them out. Um, I know. Any, anything else, Sarah, that you want to, that I thought we should mention? That was pretty good. Yeah, and um, uh, can I keep going? I have an idea, but I think you might get to it. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you have a slide that says something about your ideas need here. Um, yeah, we as do. we're as we're thinking through the next iteration of what Polar Trek could look like, um, if and when that all happens, um, if you guys have a good idea about what what the next step you think could be, um, we would love to hear your ideas. So that that's my thought. Yeah, um, I think that's a mostly a, it's a blank. It's blank because we definitely need to hear from you. And I know Sarah had sent out the survey, but if it's been a while or something else has come up, like I know John 
was involved in this um, professional development of other teachers, and there's a lot of spin-off from that that both Sarah and I like, and I'm sure John would say, yeah, that's really cool. You know, those kinds of things, we are always trying to grab those ideas because we'll be trying to figure out how to fund Poetrek beyond 2014, and, and uh, we need to have those hear from you as to what's going to make it happen for you and, and how we're going to keep keep you going and what your needs are, I guess. so. Anyway, uh, Leslie, is there something you want to say since you're writing? Okay, nothing. She said it. Um, anybody that wants to say something? <laughs> ideas, people just writing instead. Oh, cute little mountain. Okay. Um, well, if nothing else, um, Sarah, I can't change the slides, so don't know what happened there. My world froze up. Rob, um, thank you now. Okay. Oh, sure. Did you get those? Okay. So um, anyway, it was good hearing from all of you, and thanks for taking the time to um, play with us on uh, Blackboard Collaborate and share your ideas. And uh, we'll archive this, so um, it'll be around. Or if you, you know, if your researcher was like, hey, I know there were some researchers that contacted me and said they couldn't join because they're out in the field, but they wanted to see the archive. So um, we'll send that out, and uh, we hope everybody has a good rest of your summer and a good start to your school year. And um, we look forward to hearing more about what you guys are all doing. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. It was great. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, Juan.